I want to welcome everybody. How many of you is the first Bible study ever with women? We have a couple hands, few hands. Wow. You are at the perfect Bible study, okay? <laughs> you, are, uh, you are going to be loved. You are going to be mentor. You're going to be disciple here. That's what we want. That is our desire this season. So um, uh, we're just glad you're here. Uh, I see the faces. I'm so excited. I'm just jumping up and down just to... I love you ladies. I hope you understand that. I love each one of you. Uh, it is such a blessing. What an honor um, to serve the Lord with you. Anyway, I just wanted to say um, thank you for your prayers. I know so, so many of you are approaching me. My dad went to be with the Lord a few weeks ago. And um, I just want to say thank you for your support, for your prayers. He is with the Lord. So I'm just going to covet your prayers for my mom. She was married to him for over, you know, almost 60 years. So imagine that. Um, such a blessing. Uh, the other day talking to her, she will say to me, uh, you know, Claudia, I'm looking back and, and, and thinking of your dad's character. He, he never slept in other bed, in another bed, other, because he had to go to work or out of the country or whatever it was. But he always slept with me. Even when we have our arguments, he will always sleep with me, you know, in my bed. Uh, he never slept out of the house. And that's beautiful, you know, to remember that because they didn't know the Lord. Uh, they just came to know the Lord about eight years ago. So imagine that, not having the Lord, but having those, you know, those, uh, uh, those uh, guidelines and the marriage. And he was faithful to her for uh, 60 years. Uh, it's just a blessing. So I just covet your prayers for my mama. Uh, she really needs God's comfort. She needs to lean on the Lord during this time. So thank you so much for that. I also would like for you to please keep our pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Derek, in, in your prayers. He is in Mexico right now. He's in Mazatlan. I got, uh, we got an email uh, with a picture of the church. They're doing inducted Bible study up there, which is an incredible class, learning how to study the Word of God. And they have about 70 people in this small church in Mazatlan. And it's just such a blessing. I've been there a couple times, and that people is my people. They're my family. I feel like I know them. Um, so it's beautiful. When we are in the Lord, we become family, you know. It's the love that we have for one another is different, right? It's the agape love. So uh, please keep him in prayer because he'll be traveling all this month. He'll come back. He goes to uh, Philippines. And, and with that, that, keep in mind that... That leaves Rachel and the kids here behind, so please keep them in your prayers. Um, just love on her when you see her. Just love on her, okay? Um, so, um, again, uh, I know that uh, Courtney brought up to your attention about Mexico trip. We're going to have a missions Mexico trip with all women. So, please, if you are interested in going with us, um, it's January 30th through uh, February 1st, uh, so if you're interested in doing that, just sign up, come and see us after a Bible study, and we can sign you up. Okay, well, um, with that, I just wanted to say welcome, you know, welcome once again, welcome to our new season of Ladies Bible Study. Woohoo! right? Uh, the unfolding drama of redemption. What a great title, right? Jesus in the Old Testament. Um, it's a um, study from Harvest Church. And it's a very unique study. It's really, you're going to be enjoying it. You're going to be blessed. And I'm so glad that you have committed, um, uh, you know, you're committed to set aside time to come and look into God's word and, um, uh, and study this book together. When we go through this study, ladies, um, we are not just simply looking for information, for knowledge. We want to just see Jesus. We want this study to enlarge our understanding about God, to correct us if we have some uh, uh, misunderstandings about his character, about his word. Uh, so we just want to look deeply into uh, his word and learn from that. And my prayers... Uh, and my prayer is that we all make fresh discoveries, okay? That we will make fresh discoveries about God and who he is and what he's doing in our lives and in this world around us. So we're going to be looking deep into the word. Uh, let's look to Jesus. Let's look at him. And uh, I just have a question. Are you ready to dig deep? 
praise God, praise God. The Bible tells us that when we look at him, what happens is automatically we're going to be more like him. We're going to reflect him. And this world that we lived in is in desperate need of Jesus. So when we spend time with him, when we spend time in his word, we're going to become more like him, and we're going to reflect him to these people around, uh, you know, the people that we lived in, in our homes, you know, and with our roommates, with our uh, um, co-workers. So we need to reflect Jesus. And the more we spend time with him, the more we're going to be like him. And I don't know about you, but usually when I, when uh, somebody is new on the Lord or I lead somebody to the Lord, what you know, usually my tendency is to send them to the New Testament so they can learn about Jesus. They can look at Jesus. But, um, you know, usually you don't turn to the Old Testament to look for Jesus, right? You don't uh, send people to the Old Testament. And we usually go to the Gospels. And, um, but I want you to remember one time when Jesus addressed uh, the Jewish religious. And he said something like this, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, you search the scriptures because you, because you think they give you eternal life. That's what Jesus is telling them. But the scriptures point to me. You know, they point to me. They testified of me. That's what Jesus told them. And when Jesus was talking about the scriptures, who do you, what do you think he was talking to? The Old Testament, the, five, the first five books of the Bible. That's what he was talking about. So the five books of the Bible point to me. They testified of me. So, um, you know, of course, you know, we're going to go back to the Old Testament and, and see Jesus. This study is unique. And uh, some Christians live their lives not even touching the Old Testament. They don't even read it because sometimes it's just, they, they just put it aside. And, and many times it's ignorance. Sometimes they do it on purpose. You know, and sometimes people, they just don't know how to work through the Old Testament. And, uh, and they ignore that part, but it's a reflection of who Jesus is. And I want to remind you, ladies, that when Paul was talking about the scriptures and 2 Timothy, you know, when he says that the all scripture, all scripture, that means from Genesis to Revelation, all scripture uh, is, is given by inspiration of God, right? And uh, profitable, that means it's good for us, uh, for doctrine. What is doctrine? It's our opinion about God, is about his character. So Paul is saying that it's good for us because it's going to enlarge our opinion about him, about his character. And uh, it's good. The word is good for reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, which means that the word is going to tell us what to do and what not to do. And uh, it's going to be good for us because it will, it will, we will be complete, truly equipped for every good work. You know, and that's what Paul is saying by the inspiration of God. And that's what the word of God is going to do to us. I'm trusting the word of God um, that is going to do that in our hearts. Now, there are three essential parts in this study, and I want you to pay attention to that. And we pretty go through it. And you, you know, if you've been in Bible study for a long time, you know the routine, but I want to go through it again uh, just so we understand. There is three essential parts, and the first part is the personal time. The time you will be spending at home reading the Word, uh, seeking through and uh, the Word of God with the questions that are there, and this will be the easier part for you to skip, to skip, right? Many of you, I know, I know, I know, many of you skip this part, but let me tell you, this is the most important part. You're cheating yourself, so, um, because nothing can be more important for us reading His Word, expecting for Him to meet us there where we are at the moment, you know, we sit at our table and we spend time in his word and his word will minister to us right where we are. So don't cheat yourself of that. Spend quality time and it's about priorities. It's about priorities. You know, you will not go out of work, uh, the house like me. I will not. Well, sometimes I do, but uh, I will not go out of my house without makeup or, or without clothes on. So it's the same thing for us. You know, it's the same thing for us. So spend time with the, with the Lord every day. The homework is not, uh, it's not long. It's only a few pages per week. So please, have priorities in your, in your, in your, in your week. And um, 
throughout your week. And uh, I have to say, um, don't become frustrated if you cannot answer those questions. The goal is not for you necessarily to give the right answer, you know, but to interact with the scriptures and grow in, in your understanding. And some of those questions may not make sense at first, but later on, you know, they will start making sense. And that's where the leaders come in, you know, your group leaders, your co-leaders, your friends at your table, that's where they come in. They come in to guide you, to direct you, to answer questions for you, and to teach you if it's necessary, if you are in need, if you have questions about something, that's what they're there for, to help you to grow in your relationship with, uh, with the Lord. The second part of the study is the teaching part. Okay, uh, Rachel Nider and uh, Gail Alterwoods and I uh, will be teaching every, you know, every week we'll take turns and we will be teaching the lessons and we will seek, you know, that's, you know, our prayer. We will seek to explain and apply the passages that we're going through at the time. So we will do, as you do your homework, you know, you'll come and you will, uh, uh, we will reinforce what you, what you learned throughout the week. Um, so I want you to be active on that as well. You know, take your pen, take notes, um, highlight your Bible, make little notes on your Bible and, and be active about learning uh, what God is going to teach us through the study. And then the third part is the time you spend with your group, right? Uh, after the teaching, you break into your group and, um, you know, and you're going to be discussing what you learn and what you're still trying to understand to apply in your life. And this is not a place where you come in and complain about laundry and complain about your husband and complain. No, this is not what we do at our tables. We're going to focus on the word of God. So uh, not a place to come and complain, but to spend time in the word of God. So that's where uh, it's important for us. And each part is important, ladies. Each one of those three parts are important because um, it's a way that we're going to be laying foundation, building on uh, in our relationship with him. And it's, um, the reality is, is that we all have uh, um, learning, different learning styles. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. So one aspect of the study, you know, spending time with the group or listen to the teaching or doing your personal time at home um, might impact you, may impact you more than another. But, you know, all three together build you up and help you grow in your relationship with him. You know, I want you to look at the people. I want you to look at the promises that you're going to find in the word, the stories, the symbols, and the shadows of the Old Testament because they're all going to reveal something new for us in our lives. So um, before we go in and what the Lord put in my heart to share with you, I think we need to spend some time in prayer. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you, thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for your mercies that are new every morning. You are so good. You are love. You are kindness. You're patient towards us, Lord. And all we want to do is just worship you today, Lord God. We adore you. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing us here to learn more about you, to glean from you today and every week, Lord. We know that you have something special for each one of us. And we're so thankful, Lord, that you being God, all-powerful, almighty, look down on us and want to speak to us. What an honor that is. I pray that we will just live a life of gratitude for that kindness towards us. Not only that you speak to us, that you minister to us, but that you give us eternal life, that we have hope in you, that one day we're going to spend eternity with you, worshiping you and adoring you, adoring you for the rest of our lives. We love you, Lord God. We praise you, and we ask that you would just bless us and minister to our hearts. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, um, we want to start our study of the Old Testament pretty much at the end of Jesus' early, um, early ministry. Uh, sometimes um, it's revealed, uh, something is revealed, I'm sorry, something is revealed here in this scene um, 
at the end of his walk here on earth. And um, so today we will begin at the end. We're going to go to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 24. And then next week we will continue on the book of Genesis, okay? We'll go back to Genesis. But we begin in this because at the end of uh, Jesus' early ministry, um, Jesus made made, it, made made this message very clear that those stories of the Old Testament, um, they were all about him. They were all about him. So I want us to go to uh, Luke 24, and I'm going to just give you an idea. We're going to read through it, but I'm going to give you an idea what took place there. Um, the, the chapter begins with a group of women, right? The group of women uh, going to the tomb. And even though Jesus told them many times, you know, to all his disciples that he was going to suffer many things, that he was going to be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and that uh, he will be killed. And on the third day, he was going to be, uh, you know, resurrect or raised again. And they just, it just, everything went over their heads. You know, he will remind them of this over and over again. So the woman show up to the tomb. They saw that his body was gone, and they reported it to the disciples. They went back to the apostles. They reported it, and they, did they believe it? No. They didn't believe it. So uh, Luke tells us right here after this, after this, um, this uh, story, uh, he tells us the story about two men, two followers of Jesus, two of them. Uh, they were walking to the village of Emias, 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 uh, and in Spanish is Emmaus. <laughs> Emias, in the village of Emmaus, they were probably walking back to after traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover, right? So that's where the story is. And after uh, these two men witnessed what happened in Jesus uh, to Jesus in Jerusalem, they were uh, confused. They were very disappointed that the one they thought it was going to deliver Israel uh, was, uh, had been humiliated and crucified. So they were disappointed. They were sad. And as they walk and talk, Jesus came alongside of them. So uh, you can read that story a little deeper later on when you go home. Um, but Jesus came alongside and walked with them. And I don't know why they didn't recognize Jesus. They didn't realize that it was Jesus who was walking with them. And the Bible tells us this. Their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. So obviously God didn't want them uh, to, to recognize Jesus. And maybe so that he will not, they will not be so consumed with the fact that Jesus was alive and, be, and miss out on the teachings that Jesus was about to, to tell them, you know, the teachings that he had for them. So God blinded them. They, they didn't recognize Jesus. And Jesus asked them what they, were, what they were talking about. You know, Jesus came along and he says, what are you talking about? And he says, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? So obviously, Jesus recognized that they were sad. They were disappointed. Their face showed it. And they explained that they were, walk, they were talking about Jesus of Nazareth. So let's go to verse 19 right here. I'm going to read together. And it says, and he said to them, what things? This is Jesus. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and were before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who are right at the tomb early astonish us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain, certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the woman had said, but him, they did not see him. So they explained the situation, what took place, and they said, you know, one of the things that you should highlight there, he says, they said that we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. 
They were expecting this ruler, this big king, this powerful king to come and deliver them, you know, deliver Israel from the bondage of the Roman, uh, 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 for the, from the Romans. So they thought they understood, uh, uh, they understood who Jesus was and what he came to do. But the reality is that they completely missed it, right? They completely missed it. So, uh, you know, Jesus ministers to them because they, they completely were unaware of what, what was taking place. And, you know, with that, I wanted to ask a question. Do you think you have Jesus all figure it out? You know, there's no way. You know, uh, but, you know, I want to ask, have you been, have you find yourself sometimes, sometimes completely disappointed because Jesus didn't do what you were expecting him to do? You know, have you been in that position where you're disappointed, you're sad, just like those men were sad. Hmm, I expected Jesus to do this my way, you know. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we're so quick to judge them, but, you know, sometimes we can be in that same position, upset and disappointed. And sometimes we just create in our minds the Jesus we want, you know, the, the Jesus we are comfortable with. You know, we go to the Word of God, we go to the Bible, and we take what we want, what applies to us, what is good for us. You know, we take what we want. We want a, a, um, a Jesus that is passionate about the things that I'm passionate about. We want a Jesus that condemns the things that I condemned. You know, and um, some people, some people want to see Jesus as one who taught people to love everyone and that's what he did you know he did tell us to to be loving towards others and, and and some people look at him as you know and loving jesus and accepting and and and, and you know, being tolerant of sin, and that's not who Jesus is. You know, we see that many people um, in the church are sitting down and that they're tolerating sin in their lives, and not only in their lives, but in the lives of others. You know, they're accepting homosexuality as like, you know, God loves everybody. Yes, he does, but God tells us, his word tells us certain things. So and there's so many people in the church that are just, you know, applying, they're, they're making their own Jesus, their own image of their Jesus, and they're not really seeing the reality of who he is and what his character is like. So Jesus is about to tell those two men where to look, and um, they really want to, uh, if they really want to see and understand. Um, and in this, in this verse right here, in verse 25, he sounds a little frustrated. I would say pretty frustrated, uh, because then he said to them, Oh, foolish. You know, I don't know about you, but in Spanish it's like, oh, you stupid little guys. That's pretty much what it says in Spanish. Oh, stupid. Oh, foolish ones, you know. Oh, foolish ones. And slow of heart. Highlight that part. Slow of heart. Not that they were, their minds weren't there. Their heart wasn't there. It's slow of heart to believe in all that the prophet had spoken Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So right here, he pretty much calls them, call them unwise men. You know, unwise. They have heard Jesus witness to people. They have heard uh, Jesus or saw Jesus healed and challenged the, um, the Pharisees. And, and they also, obviously, they, they show us right here that they also saw Jesus carrying the cross to Calvary. But the most important part of this whole story is that they had spent years studying the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, because that's what, what it was. These men were trained since they were little uh, to go to, with, the, with, the, with the priests, you know, with the rabbi, to, to learn about the Torah, the scriptures. And they missed them. They missed the whole thing. So right here, Sometimes we can be in the same position, you know, spending time in the Bible and reading our daily, you know, our daily, you know, how many of you have that one-year Bible? And they sit there, we sit there and read and read and read. Oh, I check, I did my part. I read the Bible. You know, I did my homework. I'm caught up, you know. I was behind last, yesterday, but I got caught up. How many of us are in that position? We, we just read and read the scripture, but we really are not applying it. We're not receiving it. Um, so Jesus is saying to them, uh, if they had really listened and ex examined 
examine what the prophets said in those in those books they they could understand they would just notice it and they will be rejoicing you know they will instead of being sad they could be rejoicing because they knew that on that day they will be just waiting with expectation to see Jesus once again but instead of that they were just looking you know walking around with their heads down you know um and uh Jesus is saying, you know, the fact that I, I went to the cross doesn't deny that I am the Messiah. The opposite is, 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 is confirming it, that I am the Messiah. I went to the cross because, because the death of the Messiah was predicted. He was predicted in the Old Testament, in those five books that his death was going to, it was predicted. And that's what you and I are going to go through, and we're going to see those things. And in verse 27 says, and beginning at Moses, this is what Jesus did, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded or he illustrated, he explained to them. So he expounded to them the prophets. I'm sorry, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So isn't that amazing that Jesus didn't go to, um, to, uh, to, you know, he didn't begin this teaching with them with the birth, his birth. Well, I was born in Bethlehem, and, you know, he didn't go to his birth. He didn't go to uh, the, the Sermon on the Mountain. He went back to where? Genesis. To the beginning he went back he opened the scriptures and he went to genesis exodus leviticus and psalms and isaiah all the way to malachi to show them to tell them this is who i am this is why i came this is the curse i came to bear this is the mercy i came to show i am the sacrifice god provided isn't that amazing that he went back from the beginning and showed them all these things? And the Bible says that their eyes were open. And then verse 28 says, Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he will have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent, and we and he went in to stay with them. So all this that Jesus did, you know, it's just give them hunger for more. You know, Jesus walked and talked with this man. And they were amazed about the incredible teachings that God, that Jesus was presenting to them. And they asked them to stay. And then on verse 30, it says, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave, them, gave it to them. And their eyes, highlight that part, and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. But it doesn't end there. It says, and they said to one another, did not our hearts burn? within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us. And that is what my prayer is. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we want? We want our hearts to burn in recognition of who he is, what he's done for us. My prayer is that God will open our eyes through this study, this season. He will open us our eyes and that the word of God will do an incredible work in our hearts and they will burn all the impurities that are in our hearts because we're constantly need cleansing and the only one who can do that cleansing is Jesus Christ and his blood and his word in us so that is my prayer ladies that we want our hearts to melt at the beauty of his presence and that uh, Jesus will open up our eyes just like he did. He opened the, 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 the man's eyes first, and then their hearts burned with passion for him. You know, and I, I want our hearts to burn, to burn as he reveals himself to us. Because, ladies, there is a world out there that is in desperate need of Jesus. And we, I believe that Jesus put us here for such a time as this. For us to take in all that he has for us, to embrace it, to leave it 
to live it, to have that love in action, to live our lives according to his word so we can be a testimony of his goodness and his grace to others out there in our workplace, in our families, with our children, with our husbands. We need to be a testimony of his goodness. Do you agree with me? Yes. Let's pray. Oh God, we are just so thankful for your kindness towards us, Lord. And I know that you are going to be kind to each one of us as you walk us through your promises as you walk us through your word, Lord God. You're going to minister to our hearts. And like we said, we know that you're going to burn those impurities in our hearts. Lord, we know that you're going to do a good work in us. I pray that you will just minister to our hearts, that you will just minister to us at uh, the time that we're going to spend on our tables, Lord. Bless this time, Lord. We need you. We ask for your blessing upon it. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ladies. Enjoy the time with your leaders.